Okay, so today I want to talk about a really important concept called the expected value of a random variable. And for the moment we're just going to stick with discrete random variables like we've been mostly talking about so far. And remember that in a couple of previous lectures we talked about this really important concept called the probability mass function, or the PMF. And the PMF is basically we have a random variable, which means we get a number after we do our experiment, and we have a bunch of possible numerical outcomes. And let's suppose, for example, we're flipping a coin three times and counting the number of heads. So this is a binomial random variable, and it has this PMF, right? And if I add up all the values, I get one, because that's all the probability there is, right? So in a more complicated random variable, this might take on you know, lots and lots of different kinds of values, right? So the PMF, while it represents everything that we need to know, it sometimes is nice to be able to distill a random variable into a more understandable immediate quantity. And you may be familiar with the idea of taking the average of a bunch of numbers. That's basically what the expected value is, right? So the expected value is also kind of known as the mean or the expectation. So you may see these things used um, interchangeably. Okay, so how is this defined? So the definition, and you're going to see this notation, E of x, so big E, big x, x is some random variable, right? It's basically the sum over all the possible um, values that this random variable can assume, the value times the probability of getting that value. Okay, And so this is, in the coin flip example, pretty easy to compute, right? So for um, the coin flip, we have 0. The probability of getting 0 was 1 eighth. The outcome 1 times the probability of getting 1 was 3 eighths. The outcome 2 times that probability, and the outcome 3 times this probability. So what do I have? I have 0 plus 3 eighths plus 6 eighths plus another 3 eighths is 12 eighths, which is 1.5. Okay, So this is the expected value of that random variable. And it kind of makes sense because the PMF is symmetric around this expected value. I mean, not every PMF is symmetric, so you can't always reason about it like this, but in this case, it makes sense that the expected value should be in the middle. One thing to observe is that the expected value isn't actually the most likely value, because we know that I can't flip a coin three times and get 1.5 heads, right? So it's not exactly the most likely value, because it may not even be a value that the, PM, that the uh, random variable can undertake. It's basically... Um, the limit of what's called the sample mean. And so let's look at this example again in MATLAB. So remember that a couple lectures ago I had this situation where I was flipping a coin, say I flipped that coin a hundred times, uh, I flipped the coin th three times, I do a hundred trials of that experiment, and here these are the counts I get. So eight times I got no heads, 36 times I got one head, and so on. And if you look at the sample mean, which is 8 times 0 plus 36 times 1 plus 46 times 2 plus 10 times 3, all divided by 100 trials, I get this 1.58, right? Now, I know from previous numerical experiments that, you know, when I do the experiment 100 more times, I'm going to get some different answers, right? So when I don't do that many trials, my expected value is not necessarily going to match the sample mean. But the more trials I do, so let's suppose I do 100 or 1,000 trials now. So now my bar graph looks a lot more like the underlying PMF, and my sample mean looks a lot more like the expected value. And if I do, say, 100,000 trials, well, now things are going to be very consistent. I'm going to be very close to 1.5. And so this is, again, kind of a um, connection to the laws of large numbers that we started to introduce in previous lectures and that we're going to come back to again. Right. So the kind of take-home message here is that in the limit, um, the sample mean that we have will converge to the expected value of x. Okay. All right, so let's look at the expected values for some of the other random variables that we introduced and gave names to before, right? So for the Bernoulli random variable, remember that was just success or failure, right? So I have basically uh, zero with probability 
1 minus p and 1 with probability p. And so the expected value is just p, right? So this is like kind of equivalent to saying, okay, suppose I gave you a dollar every time I did a success in my trial, the expected payout is p times the number of trials, right? So if I did 10 trials and the expected value was, or and the probability of success was a half, then I expect that on the average I'll get five dollars from doing this experiment. Um, the geometric random variable, this is the one where, again, it looks like I have a probability of um, succeeding on the first try, on the second try, on the third try, and so on. So my my arrows go on forever, but they get smaller and smaller, so they add up to one, right? So what is my expected value there? Well, it's the probability of getting the value k, and that means I have um, 1 minus p to the k minus 1 failures and one success, okay? Now, I can take this apart into a, a bunch of infinite sums that we know how to solve, and maybe I'll save that for kind of like a side lecture on derivations. The whole point of de deriving things is that, you know, it takes up some time. So just for intuition, let me just tell you that the result is 1 minus p, okay? And so this kind of stands to reason. This is like saying that if the probability of succeeding is low, then it will take many trials on average to achieve the first head, right? Whereas if the probability of succeeding is high, then 1 over p is small, meaning that it takes me fewer flips to get to the first 10, okay? And then we also talked about the Poisson random variable. So here, remember that the PMF for that random variable was a little bit more weird looking, where alpha was what we called uh, this parameter, the sample mean, right? So what is the expected value here? Well, I have to sum up over all my possible outcomes, k alpha to the k over k factorial e to the minus alpha. Now, this looks like even somehow worse than the previous thing I had to compute, but actually this is not as bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to take out the e to the minus alpha, because that doesn't depend on k, and I'm going to sum from k equals 1 to infinity, because when k equals 0, this thing zeroes out. And then what do I have? I have alpha to the k minus, uh, yeah, alpha to the k over k minus 1 factorial, right? Because the k here cancels out with this k. And now, what is this sum here? Um, well, I'm actually going to take out another alpha. I'm going to say this is alpha e to the minus alpha this sum, and I'm going to make this sum again from k equals 0 like this. So I have alpha to the k over k factorial. Now this thing here is something that maybe you remember from calculus. It's called a Taylor series, right? So this is actually a Taylor series. And if we write out what this means, this is like saying when k equals 0, I get uh, 1. When k equals 1, I get alpha then I get 1 over 2 alpha squared, 1 over 3 factorial alpha cubed, and maybe you remember this is exactly the expansion in a polynomial form for e to the alpha. So the overall thing is alpha e to the minus alpha times e to the plus alpha equals alpha. So the expected value for the Poisson random variable is in fact alpha, and that makes sense because that's actually how we defined alpha in the first place. It was the average number of, uh, you know, expected uh, out, uh, arrivals that we see in a given interval. So in a way, we kind of predefined uh, alpha to be the mean, okay? And so you may be asking, well, what about the binomial random variable? What's the mean of that? So uh, I'm going to show you that in a future lecture, and we're going to use the properties expected value to make that computation really easy. So tune in for the next one.